the weirdest thing right now is that we, we live in a world where we are isolated more than ever, but we're also able to work globally more than ever. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the smart marketers will figure out that, you know, team, teaming up globally and working uh, you know, across the world will be a, uh, an advantageous time. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Engati CX. We have the pleasure of welcoming Jeff Barrett to our interview series today. I'm Rahul, and just let's just begin with a quick introduction of what, what Engati really is. Engati is the world's leading multilingual no-code chatbot platform available across 14 channels with 30,000 bots created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. Engati has also been recognized as a top platform by Inc.com, TechWorld, CIO, and many others. We run the Engadi blog, video channel, and of course, the Engadi CX podcast, receiving upwards of 300,000 visitors annually. And now, of course, for our guest, Jeff Barrett is a Shorty Award winner and is a Webby Award nominee. He's a member of Forbes Top 50 in social media and is ranked by Business Insider as their number one ad executor a thought leader in public relations and in social media. Barrett has built a following with a value-based approach to media placements and content distribution. He has also traveled to nearly every state writing about startup ecosystems. He creates dynamic campaigns and influencer networks for Fortune 500, Fortune 500 clients, including Adobe and Oracle. It's such a pleasure to have you on board, Jeff, today. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me. All right, so, but before we get the inside scoop from Jeff himself, uh, here's a quick announcement. So we have something really special waiting for you, all of you viewers out there. So stick around till the end of the interview and you'll find out what it is. All right, Jeff, you ready to dive on this one? Yeah, and I'm excited about what's at the end of this interview too. <laughs> for sure, you gotta wait for the end till then. All right, so yeah, shooting, so the, all right. shooting the first question to you, Jeff, is businesses are going through a digital transition with this pandemic. And, and how, according to you, is marketing going to change in the new normal that's coming up? Right. So some of this is new normal. Some of this will stay, right? So there are certain companies that were possibly struggling, especially, you know, large mall retailers, uh, big boxes. Um, that just accelerated. So I think I read an article that this two or three months of pandemic accelerated uh, technological change four to five mm -hmm. years. And that, that's probably true, right? If you look at the adoption rate of people using online uh, retail, it's always been slower than we ever thought it needed to be. I mean, we've really had the technology to be doing this 25 years ago, but we just were slower to the uptick. Now, um, the, the key thing here is understanding what things are going to be kind of temporary in marketing and what things are more um, just sustained and going to kind of always be pervasive. Um, I look at, um, you know, messaging and everything that you put into marketing, um, targeting mark marketing has kind of evolved from being this very, very creative approach to trying to attract somebody to a very more so numbers and data driven, um, you know, kind of way just because of how we get our content. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that is true. But what I think is more important is understanding some things that will remain the same is how we work from home more, how the family unit um, becomes more flexible, how work from home then kind of dictates how we view content, when we view content. I really do think that the flexibility on how and where we get content will be the thing that kind of probably becomes the new normal once we're out of this pandemic. I think that, uh, I, I don't, I think everybody has discovered that they can use Zoom. And so we've, we're now kind of never, you can't put that toothpaste back in the tube otherwise. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. You know, once you find out the new comfortable stuff that you can do, right. I mean, it's really hard to go back to the older ways. And as you mentioned, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, as they say, uh, you know, misery is the mother of inventions or maybe something on that yeah. lines. I think we needed this kick and the, you know, a stomach to kind of actually adapt this technology way better like we are right now. Yeah, yeah, so people uh, people have definitely figured out some things that they'll be able to use a lot more and figured out that they really can buy anything online. Mm. So that's where that has really accelerated things. I don't think from a from a programmatic and a you know a uh, from a lot of ad platforms that that's going to change that drastically. Mm. I just think 
there's going to be more emphasis put into it because we are really going to, uh, you know, we've definitely dev devalued the, you know, the prime time, um, you know, the Super Bowl ads, the, yeah. these kinds of things versus digital. I mean, they were, they were holdovers already, but we are really now in a, in a world where, let's be honest, the thing you say in your kitchen that then becomes the Instagram ad is the norm. That's correct. I think the hierarchy is shifting now. Yeah. Yep. Uh, beautiful input. All right, moving on to the next one. So, Jeff, according to you, how big a part of the digital PR conversation is the chatbot trend? Well, I think, I mean, this is interesting because it becomes a part of everything, right? So if I want to try and, uh, so right now in, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I live, if I want to uh, pay my water bill, put more uh, money in my trash account so they'll come and pick up my trash, it's all, it's all chatbot. Um, this it's, there's a lot, I mean, I didn't think that would happen as fast as it did here. Um, there are, there are a lot of different uses, right? There's from the customer service to the just efficiency standpoint, uh, from, from marketing, right? Uh, to just use it for deal flow. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different reasons to, to employ chatbots, but I, I just think people are going to start to become way, way more comfortable with, with the functionality. Plus it's gotten a lot, it's gotten a lot better. Um, you know, but that, um, I think from the business standpoint, from the end user, the chatbot becomes more efficient. It becomes a way to, um, you know, kind of channel people through a uh, really bad customer service, right? From a company standpoint, right, that there's an efficiency in being able to do use a chatbot to make sure that you get people to the right spot, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that we use in advertising to make sure we target someone and figure out exactly where to send them to get them to an action. The same thing with a chatbot. You're trying to use that to get somebody faster to the destination. I mean, I can't believe in 2020 that we still use a functionality where, you know, you're on a phone and you're somehow, you know, you need to wait through a bunch mm -hmm. of messages to then figure out to press seven, to then press nine, to press three. <laughs> I, it's just wholly inefficient. And I can't, can't believe we're still, we're still doing that. So. Yeah, I think, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because we actually still, you know, wherein we could actually, you know, the, I think, I think what, what best works for chatbots is like being the first point of contact for the customers wherein, you know, they can actually answer a lot of these repetitive questions and, you know, like have that personalized, but again, like, you know, uh, the main problem with a lot of these chatbot vendors is that they make it very robot, very like a robot like message. They don't make it yeah. very personalized for the customer. So I think that is one important aspect. That we should well, do. and I think, I think you're right. It, 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 it qualifies a bunch of frequently asked questions, right? Mm -hmm. And then if somebody still needs to talk to a, you know, hopefully it answers a few things that could have just been answered easily. But if somebody still needs to talk to a, a real live human, then that just gets them there faster. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what, that's what we focus on Engati too, right? So for us, it's, it's very important for the customer to feel at home and, you know, uh, be, be served better by the chatbot by using personalized NLP and stuff and uh, personalized messages, but also we consider the fact that a lot of times our queries are a little too complex for the chatbot. So maybe have the functionality to actually connect with your agent really quick. So I think that is one yeah. important point that you mentioned. Yeah. yeah. It's a funnel basically. I mean, you're, you're hoping that like 85, 90% of things that can easily be answered, get answered by that. And then mm -hmm. that means that the people that are on the phone line can then, you know, be more efficient and, and handle the, the harder things. Mm -hmm. That's true. Those right. two things still work in concert with each other. That's correct. Yeah. I mean, it's like a, it's like a mixture. It has to be like very, yeah. you know, perfect. All right. So now that we are talking about the pandemic and you know, the post pandemic new normal. So Jeff, do you believe marketing automation will play a significant role in the future? And, and if so, what aspects of digital marketing cycle can be automated? I, I just, I don't think we're going back to a way in which we use less automation, right? If anything, we're going to use more automation. We're going to use more automation to qualify leads, um, to get people to where they need to go, to, to understand those frequently asked questions. I, I, I honestly think we've gotten to a point now where we're going to use all of the technology, all of the, all of the social media platforms that we have 
to, to keep targeting people. Marketing is constantly a shift, right? Mm. It, so if you look at the 80s and 90s, the infomercial was a, a, an effective tool, right? Yeah. It's not an effective tool now. Um, these things change and they shift. And eventually, um, you know, popping up in somebody's IG, um, because you mentioned something, will, will eventually not be the tool. Basically, there's a five or six year life cycle on any good form of marketing before the consumer catches on and then they become a little bit more, you know, <laughs> yeah. wary, wary of using it. So there's going to have to be more of that. Where I think we're heading is more um, customer empowerment. I think right now we're in this bridge space. Um, what I mean by that is that for the longest time, we used to advertise to people on radio and TV and all these platforms to them, mm -hmm. right? You're watching, you're a captive audience. We're going to market this out to you. And where I think we're heading is utilizing all these tools to kind of be omnipresent when somebody wants to go out and seek out your company. Right. Um, you know, now, yes, there will always have to be prompts. You obviously have to make people aware of what you're doing, but I think building tools and building automation to be um, able to kind of, for lack of a better way of saying it, make somebody think that it's their decision when they come and, and seek you out. I think that's where we're heading. Yeah. Yeah. I think brand visibility, uh, a part of things, right? So you got to make yourself visible and, and make it feel like, you know, they are the ones who are trying to like reach us and we are available whenever they want us to be. Yeah. From a messaging standpoint, this is, just, it, it's just going to change from hi, we're this company, please buy our stuff to mm -hmm. hi, we're here to help. What yeah. can we do for you? And that, you know, and so then, you know, because then you, you direct people to whether it's their website or whether it's audio search. Um, I, I'm bullish on people using audio a lot more. I think that's going to be um, a big part of, um, of this, this next decade, but mm. we'll see. All right. Okay. So uh, Jeff, uh, do you see a lot of companies adopting social listening as such? And you know, how does one really leverage social listening while crafting brand campaigns? Well, I think everybody's listening, right? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I joke about the fact that you say something in your kitchen and then becomes an ad like five <laughs> yeah. pictures down in your Instagram. But that's, <laughs> I mean, and that's the normal. And for millennials and Gen Z, right? I mean, especially as a millennial myself, like I, I, that doesn't bother me at all. I'm like, cool. You know, it's like I mentioned that I needed sunglasses and then the sunglasses magically appear. This is great. And all that, you know, is, I mean, that's obviously social listening. That, that's it's a tool that you can't not use as a marketer because uh, ultimately you want to know what your customers are saying, what they're thinking, what they're, you know, what they're into. And then those become the most qualified leads you can, you know, mm -hmm. I, it's just a, it's a wholly inefficient system to just spend a lot of money pumping out mass messages in 2020 when we know that we can kind of send out little bits and pieces that are targeted to the right people and we can test those and we can see how they work and we can adapt those. Um, you know, it's a really interesting time to be in marketing, to be honest with you, because of how, how personalized and how individualized we can make content. Now, obviously there's gotta be some automation to that, but from a social listening standpoint, uh, I can't see people using it less. Um, now, that being said, there are obviously going to be, um, you know, different and shifting guidelines. Uh, obviously, Europe has a little bit of a different take on it than the U.S. with GDPR. Uh, we're probably going to trend toward some kind of more regulation in social media in the next, uh, I would think, four or five years in this country. Um, every time there's an election year, like there is this year, we tend to uh, we tend to have a deeper discussion about what the role is uh, that social media plays in that. Mm -hmm. um, but from, from a social listening standpoint, I mean, it would be kind of crazy not to be using that right now to at least at the very baseline, just understanding customer sentiment. Right. But then, you know, in a deeper sense to be using it to target people would be, you know, what I'd be doing with any company. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I mean, it's the, the, the field out there is so competitive these days that 
I mean, that's one place you can find your information and actually get your leads from. Well, and, and it's just like, how would you not want real time feedback on everything you do? Because then it's not just the social listening, it's that it influences what you do, right? Mm. So that if you know that you have this engine that will pl- always supply you with real time feedback, then you mm. can throw things out there and test those. Um, a, a very common thing in PR, right? So, I mean, that's the field I work in. A very common thing is it, we call this a trial balloon. It's a thing that we throw out there to the media, um, but it's not from us. It's from somebody else. It's some, mm. some other conjecture where somebody goes, ooh, I think this person might be thinking about doing this, you know, or I think this brand might be thinking about doing this. And then you wait for 48 hours to see if everybody hates it or if they like it. That really, uh, PR has been doing that mm. forever. Now we're just seeing that, you know, creep into marketing. The same concept. Yeah, yeah. All right, this was great. I think, Jeff, I have one last question remaining to ask you is, All right. oh, pretty open-ended. Do you have any other thoughts that you'd like to leave our audience with today? I, I think the biggest thing from a, from a marketing standpoint is, um, I would be thinking, uh, normally, I do a lot of planning and I think in you know two years, five years, everything else. Um, I don't think any of us really fully know, you know when this ends, what things look like afterward. Hmm. Um, but my, my best advice is just keep, you know, like what I do to start every day is I read for an hour. Um, and I just read about a bunch of different topics and try and stay up on things and try and understand where trends might be going. Because I think the, the biggest thing you can do to empower yourself in this field is kind of um, be, a, be very inquisitive and be a student of what is happening. Mm. And so I, I think there are certain things that have become pretty evident in the first three months of where you know, where the world is heading and how we're, how we're creating commerce. But, you know, one of the things that's interesting too is as we de-emphasize having to be in a physical space with each other, what that does do is it opens up more opportunities to work globally, right? Okay. It's, it's the, the, weirdest, the weirdest thing right now is that we, we live in a world where we are isolated more than ever, but we're also able to work globally more than ever. Mm-hmm. And so I think that the smart marketers will figure out that you know, team, teaming up globally and working, uh, you know, across the world will be a uh, an advantageous time. Also, you know, um, the U.S. isn't exactly doing well right now, <laughs> so you know, <laughs> throwing out a few <laughs> a few ideas across the world and just uh, you know, diversifying your bonds, as the Wu Tang Clan would say, might not be a bad idea. Yeah, for sure, I get that. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, beautiful. I mean, this right here is the biggest example of that, right? I mean, yeah. you're right you're there. I mean, I'm in India and we're having this conversation. I mean, who would have thought like before if, if this wouldn't have happened? But yeah, it's great. great. Great insights. Thank you so much, Jeff, for giving us your time. Your insights were really valuable and I'm pretty sure that our audiences uh, will, they'll really enjoy this interview. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks, Rahul. And also now, uh, if they've gotten to this point, now they get to hear that special surprise that you hinted at. Oh, the beginning. yeah. So they must be happy as. <laughs> you've yeah. got it right. So if you've stuck around for this long, we're so excited to announce that our ebook, The Evolution of Customer Experience, is out and available totally for free to download. So check the link in the description, description and you will find it below right there. And uh, we'll be back with another episode uh, with a brand new expert soon and stay tuned and we'll see you around for the next one. I really appreciate this, Jeff. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Harold.